work. Yeah, it seems to be working. Alright, take Rabbit here again. Yeah, so we could actually go through um, the motherboard today. Um, so I purchased this one here. It's an Asus motherboard. I just want to say that I am kind of an Asus fan most of the time if I get to choose to buy a motherboard then I will go for Asus but there are of course very many other good manufacturers out there so but I think that I could use this to illustrate the um, points that I want to go through now because I'd like this to be also a general video for somebody that um, you know wants to um, select a motherboard so I thought what we could do is we could just do a quick unboxing of this because uh, it probably won't take that long and then um, yeah, then we can discuss around motherboards in general using this one as an XOP. Oh, oh, that's a lot of glare. <laughs> Plastic cover. So let's see what we have here. Take the top layer off. Look at that later and see what we have here. Okay, we have a separate back plate. Now the thing is, that there are some motherboards already out there on the market where they've decided to integrate the back plate into the motherboard um, or onto the motherboard, so you don't actually have this separate piece anymore. But this seems to contain that. Have some. It's like offset screws. I don't know exactly what they're for yet. Because they're very small and there's only two of them. Look at that. That's strange. Yeah, I'll maybe I have to read the manual and find out what they think I should use those for. And then we have. Safety information. Probably won't need that. And then we have is this general layout information or some quick start guide maybe. Yes, motherboard layout. Yeah, so let's see. Or is it just the mini environment? Ah, it's that usual confusion of languages and instructions. How to install the processor and the cooler and the memory and stuff and where they are. I can use this as reference if I find them. Oh, certificate of reliability. Never seen that before. Okay, <laughs> yeah, this is. <laughs> if this is supposed to be a test certificate, then uh, it's, it's pre printed, so. <laughs> now, whether they've actually run the test out. I mean, it is ASUS, so I do have well, well trust them. What they do, and then they oh, still seem to be including user guides, even though these are all all the user guides are available online. Oh, what are we got in? Oh, sticker. I like stickers. Let's see here, something. Oh, you could. Uh, they actually had in this package. They had that you could. Um, oh, don't use my code to order the stuff. Not that I'll actually be ordering these cables. Yeah, yeah you can. Uh, cable Mod is a company that makes custom cables, so you can actually you can um, you can um, uh, define the dis the lengths and what connectors you want, and then what colors each one should be, and what type of material they should use, and all kinds of stuff. And then the usual driver disc that one usually never uses. And then, this. and then this is probably a pretty generic instruction manual. 
that's all contains the, oops, the layout of the board, which is the most probably the most useful thing. So I will actually leave that page open. So this is actually the first time I'm opening this box. So I actually haven't seen it earlier. I haven't rehearsed doing the unboxing or anything. So, and then we go back to the upper part, and this is actually quite heavy. So I'll open this, and it's in there. Let's see. A SATA cable, so this is for your store, yeah, for one. Actually seems to be, oh that's nice, look. They've in included, um, that should be two cables, one with, um, you see, the bent connector. That can be very useful in some, some case installation configuration. Where the um, straight SATA, SATA um, connector can be a real pain. Space what? Okay, the actual motherboard. start discussing but I would like to just I would like to take this plastic off and before I do that I'm just going to um, use this ESD um, armband to um, prevent static discharges from killing my motherboard. First time I open this, Let's see how it works. I actually don't usually use these ESD armbands. And in this case, I don't want to ruin this motherboard. So here we go. So the basics of an ESD is that one has a connector. And one has the actual cable, and usually they have this so that you can actually have it a little bit longer distance. And the most important thing is that you have when you're going to put it on your arm, then this metal needs to contact your skin and not be on your clothes. So, actually, just put it on there, like that. And then, now this is Europe specific only, so. We'll do this in other market regions. Well, here we have a typical outlet for uh, Euro, you know that we use in Europe. And these are uh, these are the um, grounding tabs. These. So what we can safely do here in Europe is that we can actually connect to that. So now they are actually very well connected to the electrical ground of the house. And I can be sure that I won't be. I'm discharging any static energy into this motherboard. And I can actually take it out of its package. I will be putting it back on. This, this is interesting. So. I will be reading off the text here, so I don't forget some small details. But, uh, but as I said, this is a motherboard, so um, basically anything I'm going to go through now can apply to pretty much any motherboard. So let's say that you're in the process of selecting a motherboard, then basically you need to know, okay, uh, what processor are you going to use? That's the main thing that comes up. Is it going to be an Intel processor, an AMD processor? And um, what generation of the processor, like if it's Intel, then it's like you know, Core i6, Core i7, and then what model number, like Core i7, 6800 or something. Or if you're using AMD, 
uh, then usually it's like the same. It's the same story. Like, what generation is it? Like the Ryzen five generation or Ryzen no, not not five two, like Ryzen one, Ryzen two in generation, and then what's the model number? Is it like Ryzen five two thousand six hundred? So that's the model number. So you you need to kind of you need to know that. And it's also important to know if your processor has integrated graphics and you have to like consider are you going to actually use it or not and um, then um, directly connected to that is that if you're going to use the graphics output of the actual processor then uh, what what type of out graphics output do you want to have available on the motherboard like do you want to have um, HDMI there and then it's DVI here yep. so that's that mm, okay yeah so that's the bit about the processor. You start with the processor, and that will then um, uh, define part of the, yeah, so you can get into the right branch of the actual motherboard you're going to buy. And then the tricky thing comes in that the, uh, you know, then you um, have to choose the, what chipset do you want to use because in certain cases they can be f different chipsets. Or f several different chipset models that pr uh, support the same processor. Uh, but that is also the when you're selecting this, the the chipset, then it, it's not only the processor that um, uh, is the key factor. It's the you know what other type of functionality do you want to have available? So I'm going to go go through kind of generally that that p the picture that's that's involved with that. And then gives you know some of my own recommendations. Um, what was I going to look at there? I usually want to have um, uh, yeah. When it comes to memory, all right. So we can start with this. So here's the, here's where the processor goes. And it's actually funny that this motherboard doesn't come with a protection. Um, you know any kind of protection for the socket. Maybe this is typical for AMD boards, but I mean when you get Intel then you actually have a, a plastic protection over the socket for the processor and I don't see one here. But anyway here you have the sockets for the memory and then you have four of them and um, uh, and then I would recommend that um, you check that you can actually install like a minimum of 32 gigabytes of RAM into the board, like that it supports it at speeds like starting at 2666 and then up. Um, you could look at the overclocking um, figures for the motherboard to gauge if it, uh, if it actually supports higher um, higher um, clock rated um, memory. And then you have to be careful uh, when you are selecting a when you're using AMD, and you have a Ryzen processor with um, graphics uh, uh, integrated graphics that you actually pay, pay pay a little bit more attention to the memory selection because there there has been instances where there's uh, you have to be very more specific in what memory you select. <laughs> And um, usually you install well, you install the memory in pairs. So I'm assuming in this motherboard I haven't actually read the manual, but it's probably this one and this one gets populated first, and then that one and that one. So I'm going to put um, 16 gigs of RAM in here. So I have two so two um, module memory modules. So I'll be populating probably that one or that one, or depending. I'm going to look at the. It's always good to look at the manual to see what memory configuration. Um, is appropriate for the memory you have, or where you should, which slot you should start off. So some, 
sadly not 100% standardized in which order they put the so slots. So you can have like channel 1, channel 2, or maybe it's channel 1, channel 2, or maybe you start from this end and it's channel 1, channel 2. So it's <laughs> better to look at, look at the motherboard, the actual Mac. Um, then the next fact is expansion slots. And, um, uh, and we have to look at what cards do you want to put uh, plug into the board. Um, and then, um, and then, what interfaces do those cards have? Like, I think the like the minimum nowadays is like you have to have like PCI Express uh, 2.0 uh, times one. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> the expansion card won't work on any motherboard basically that's in existence today. I would suggest that when you're looking for a new motherboard, that then you 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 check the specification and see that it has. Uh, uh, two times PCI Express 2.0 times 16, and then this has this like there's one socket and there's the other one, and then whatever else is left is like um, times that's PCI Express 2.0 times one usually. And um, uh, this is this is important if you would like to have, for example, more than one graphics card. Usually nobody runs multiple graphics cards nowadays. So, but but I seem to. I like to have it for possible future expandability, or, or maybe there'll be another another type of um, Time 16 card I want to install someday. And especially if you're into YouTubing and stuff, then it might be a video encoding, full HD, 4K video encoding card or something, and then you would like to have one of these. Possibly uses one of these slots. Um, let's see, and then you have. Um, I think this motherboard actually had two, two locate two. You have this um, on on modern motherboards. You have the option to add on board storage, and that's represented by M two two underscore one or M two underscore two boards places, and um, you can um, see them. Basically, gonna lift this up since you can see this connector isn't a good example of that. I'll slot it in from there. Did I show it correct? It's actually hard to see. Now it must be the one puts it. One puts it in there, and then it expand. It goes in that direction. No. I might have it wrong. Ah, those are why you have those um, high-rising things. So it's probably you plug it in there, and then it comes out here. I actually don't have any of those um, uh, drives right now. But the um, the the trickiness um, with these slots. And the onboard storage is that they usually they borrow PCI lanes from either one of these slots or one of these slots. So when you're populating these either with one or two of them, then you get into this issue that okay, how much? What is it using at the same time? And if you're using this one, then can you use the full performance of this slot? And if you're using that one, can you, you know? So you really have to read the manual. So it's a it's a bit of a pain. Plus the thing is that they. Um, it, this is still evolving on, in both the um, hardware and the OS side, in my opinion. And compatibility issues can crop up if you use the wrong specific version of the M um, uh, module type. They're a bit more expensive than traditional um, SSD. They're faster, though, in some cases, if you, if you have the system configured correctly. <laughs> Plus, there's some very odd thermal issues that uh, there was even one benchmark where uh, wait, wait a second, if it if it got too cold, it didn't work properly. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, wait a second, what? <laughs> so that's uh, the first time I ever heard that you shouldn't cool something down that's electronic to make it work better. But anyway, whatever. 
And then, uh, you know, sometimes you get in a positioning on board can be awkward, but in this case, I think it's actually very, yeah, r relatively clear how they're in position, so I don't think that uh, it won't be. I think they, they slot in here and here. And then they can have different lengths. I think that's why that's why you have that extra riser. So that must be the, the case. So, to bore anybody to tears, but probably mechanically interesting to know that those are the risers that I got. So it means that then you screw them into whatever location is depending on the physical uh, length of the um, M2 card you're going to use. I don't know. I, I still think that technology is still evolving. Huh? Really, not not that keen. And even though they are, you know, it, it builds for you. Can put a system. You can have a two hundred and fifty-six um, uh, gigabyte you know, a boot drive, and you can have that as an M2 drive. So that works fine. Um, then, if we're talking about storage in general, then one has to actually map out one storage. What do you what do you have, or what do you go intend to get? Like here, do you intend to have these um, M2X cards, or do you want to have um, uh, normal SSDs? And they're usually here. Here's four of them. There might actually even be more on this card. Let's see if there's any more. Those might. Uh, those look like. There's even two more there, and then there's four there. Is there any more? I can't see any more. Um, I should just check that if it's serial ATA 6.0, uh, no, serial ATA 6 gigabits per second, just check that that's the, and then make sure you have a minimum of two connectors, and then everything else is like, you know, luxury. Um, usually the configuration and the configuration that I'm going to use is that I have uh, one SSD and one mechanical hard drive. So that's usually the combination you run. Mechanical one being larger capacity. Now some people want to run um, uh, multiple hard drives in a RAID configuration. Basically, you you have uh, th this one is probably uh, probably they're restricted to these two SATA ports. Uh, so then you have this um, so-called RAID zero, which is that you have two hard drives or two SATA devices, and then you connect them both to here, and then um, they stripe the data to both, and then they read them from both. So then it's very fast. But if you lose one of the drives, then you're screwed. And then level one is that then you have two devices of the same size, and then it copies the data <coughs> to both and reads them from both. And th this motherboard supports right level ten as the next step, and I can't remember what that is, but I think that's actually like ah, you can look it up on the internet, no, I'm not, I'm not going to use it, but I think that's probably minimum three drives, and then you have redundancy over all the drives. Or something else. I'm not sure, I haven't read the manual, but I'm, as I said, I'm not interested in running RAID on this, but if you, if you or let's say, put it this way, if you're going to, if you want to run hardware RAID, and you want to have it integrated on the motherboard then make sure you know what RAID level and what configuration you're running and then look up online that the motherboard software level supports that type of RAID configuration before you buy the motherboard. Okay, what's next? Um, networking, uh, basically you have oh, pretty much any motherboard will give you a um, a gigabit port just there, and then um, pushing the camera around here. And then, if you want to have wireless, then you have to um, 
Yeah, some boards come with integrated wires. But, um, yeah, not that often. So just make sure that if, if Wi-Fi is a requirement, then make sure the motherboard has it. Um, audio can be a bit tricky. You have to, you basically have to, I'm not an audiophile, so I'm not going to be able to expand on the technologies of audio, but basically you, I, I recommend you, um, you know, are you going to be a heavy headphone user? Do you want to have surround support? like? you know, spatial sound and what level, 5.1, 7.1, 8 channel. Uh, do you want to have, what type of output do you want to have for the audio? In this case, this motherboard only supports um, HDMI and then it has the um, yeah, analog outputs for the, uh, for the uh, um, audio. And it probably has some split or cable configuration. Can't remember what I was thinking when I actually bought the board. I thought I wanted to have a optical output SPDAF, but this one doesn't have one. So I don't know what I was thinking when I purchased this. But let's say that if one wants to have, just as a hint, if you want to have a optical um, audio output. Uh, you can actually buy a sound card. <laughs> they're, they're not that expensive. And, and usually all the sound cards you buy uh, today, they have an SBA. Yeah. Then you can have an optical output as an addition. So, found something I missed. I actually didn't go even through my own requirements. So I would have liked to have had the optical. Optical out for audio. PDIF, but I can't see it anywhere here. Oh, bummer. But it, it's not, as I said, it's not really a critical thing. I, <sighs> I wonder what I was thinking. Well, I could work around that. I can either get a, a sound card or, which, as I said, they're very cheap. Or I can run it through HDMI. Anyway, I can move on. Uh, so anyway, the most consideration is that if you're a heavy headphone user and you want quality sound, then it might be a good idea to watch some uh, specific motherboard reviews in terms of audio performance. And then check what types of connectors you want to have for the audio. <laughs> Which I obviously didn't do. As well. um, and then um, when you're talking about USB connectivity it gets a bit of a chaos um, uh, usually you should look for that you have a USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports and then um, yeah. yeah and um, <coughs> then you have to like think of how many devices are you going to connect directly to the motherboard or to this configuration and that some of the um, uh, we can see here I would assume there are actually I haven't looked at the manual oh wait we have to just set it up here but here we can see the USB and that's four ports and since I didn't read the manual I don't know usually they have it like that there's probably going to be um, uh, two of the um, three 3.0 ports and then yeah, two of the t uh, 2.0 ports. Well, we'll see. You can check that up in the manual. But you need to sort of like think how many devices you have and then what the USB standard they're using and then okay, then you can um, then you can also expand this board or all boards have expansion headers for more USB um, ports so you can actually uh, take them directly to the um, to the case. And, uh, let's see what do we find here. Hmm. 
Yeah, what USB ports, what level of USB do they support, what's the total number, and what is the number that is actually exposed only through headers through the motherboard. Uh, cooling. I uh, basically want to know, want to be a little bit confident that the cooling for the voltage regulation for the processor, the voltage regulation for the processor is pretty much here. That one and that one, and then just to make, yeah, get a, a feeling. And if one feels uncertain, then, uh, if one's going to run a processor which is really high power rated, which I'm not going to do, then um, double check the, um, or, you know, what, what online says about the uh, VR, the voltage regulation circuit. And then in some cases, if you want to run really lots of fans on the case, <clears throat> then you should check how many fan headers there are. And then if you want to, um, for reasons of aesthetics, um, I actually have a separate point on aesthetics, but I mean for lead control and stuff, then you should sort of look and see if those fan headers provide control options for for lighting, or are there specific headers to support USB uh, lead strips, and if they do, then what kind? But I, I, I'm not going to do an aesthetics job on this, so not really a thing that I'll be following up too much. Uh, yeah, if you want to know a lot about power delivery, then I su suggest you go over to um, a channel called Gamers Nexus. I'll put a link in the comments. <laughs> then you can get an education on power management, on VRM technologies. Um, other factor is that, um, you know, what physical size of a board are you looking for? Do you already have a case or are you going to um, buy a new case? Because then you have to say, is it like, this is the ATX standard. But there is also a micro ATX, mini uh, ITX, oversized ATX. Ah, my micro ATX is probably the next um, standard, so it's a bit smaller board. Usually you can get very good um, smaller motherboards. It, it didn't used to be that years ago, but I mean, I, I, I don't think from a raw performance perspective you can get quite good small boards, if that's, if that's the thing. I usually go for the big boards. There's no cost benefit of going for the small board. So that's form factor covered. So you know, check what you're, what you have in terms of where you're going to install it, or you know, if it's going to be a home theater system in a smaller case, or is it a replacement for an existing system? Mm. Oh, is it lead control? I had a bit of here aesthetics, and then overall look. I mean, you know, do you care, like? Do you, do you do you care that this looks good, or you know, do you like the color, or <laughs> because that comes next? You can get, you know, there are lots of motherboard manufacturers are trying to also put an aesthetics angle on their motherboard, so you, know, you need to consider is that something that's important? Um, yeah, well that's that's that. Um, and then also the important thing is that after you put all these details together and as long as the technical combinations work out then you actually have to go with your gut feeling like does this feel good like I I, you, I like uh, Asus motherboards but you know there's a lot of people that like gigabyte motherboards and you know there are other manufacturers out there also so um, yeah make the, make the decision but I mean it's important to get the basic te technology things in line and um, don't miss things like I did. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking when I didn't check that the motherboard actually had the SPI IDF for for the sound because I actually have, have a need to have that. But as I said, but I, hmm, I don't know if I was thinking that I should buy a discrete um, separate sound card, but that sounds crazy. I mean, nobody buys a sound card nowadays. I don't know exactly, or was I thinking of um, chaining the HDMI? That, that, that could have been in my mind also, you know, to take the audio out of the um, HDMI. So something I have was thinking about, which I don't know, but I will, I will figure that out. 
But if I really need the SPDIF, then I can um, fix it somehow. Really big deal. Okay, I was thinking I would post some um, uh, pictures of this on the Facebook page for the channel. So if you want to like, you know, look at the uh, look at this specific motherboard in more detail, then you could. Um, I should also post the model number on the Facebook or post so that you can pull up the manual for it if, you, if you're interested. And um, yeah, well, if you found this interesting, then um, consider subscribing. Hit the bell, get notified of new videos. I'm going to um, continue with this upgrade build process for the channel. So, you know, my objective is to build a, a machine that can do the basics of, uh, of what I need for my, for the, uh, the Tech Rabbit channel, which is like um, uh, the, you know, video, obviously video um, production, like playing you know, or encoding video and then um, video editing and then um, also the everything to do with what I do with, uh, generally on this channel. With, you know, software development and other things that um, have to have some PC support. Anyway, yep. Yeah. Well, hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you in the next one.